So thank you very much, Professor Pitas, for your nice introduction. Um, yeah, maybe you want to know more about us, you can go to this uh, web page. So um, uh, I'm director of the Robotics Lab at the University of Seville and scientific advisor of the CATEC Center for Aerospace Technology. And I work also in the, I'm the chairing the, the technical committee on aerial robotics and among other systems, i 3 play if you are interested. And also I am the coordinator of the robotics topic group of the European Association of Robotics, which is a robotics. Okay. Um, today I will uh, I will go after the introduction to clarify the topics between a man aerial system and aerial robotics. And then I will go to the central point, going to the autonomy, autonomy in aerial robotics, and then some examples of autonomous landing. Then I will go for multiple UAV system, which is one of our speci specialities. And then um, I will, in all the talk, but particularly here, um, reinforce the bio-inspired uh, approach. And then I will go to aerial robotic manipulation and the conclusions. So uh, uh, some people uh, complain about the bureaucracy of the European project, and I agree. But in any case, uh, I enjoy it a lot. And I think that thanks to this project, I have a lot of collaboration and a lot of, uh, I would say, research success. So if, I think that if I am the most uh, seated uh, persons in aerial robotics, drones, and UAVs, and all that, according to Scopus, is because my collaboration in all these projects. So I started. Um, with the aerial robotics in the 90s, but my first project I started in 2002, dealing with heterogeneous aerial robots, and then cooperation between area and ground, you will see later some results. And then I will go to the um, safe mobile, which is uh, related with landing, you will see later, and also with um, started with aerial robotics manipulation. And then um, you will see some results, including the bio-inspired. We got the, the, uh, the Technology Transfer European Technology Transfer Award in the ICT because this project, essentially. And then because the more basic research, I got the New Technologies Award uh, in Spain, uh, Rey Jaume Premier, which is the biggest in Spain. So difference between a monetary vehicle and aerial robotics. I put here some key, key notions, performance. Uh, sorry, it's a problem here, but performance is a key topic um, because we need to design uh, with the long range and with the duration flight. And this is also related with autonomy, as you will see later. But um, first, we have to maintain this kind of aerodynamic efficiency. Safety, obviously important, and reliability function. We can have failures and we have to recover from the failures. And you have a even uh, very low level navigation. This is a hot topic today, very low level navigation. Um, and then the integration in the aerial space, which is also related to multi UAV systems. However, in aerial robotics, we have mainly the perception and planning capabilities, including reactivities. So these are topics that will be included in my presentation today, related with the perception and planning uh, activities. So here we, we have a lot of uh, UAVs in, in the lab. So we have been building UAVs since the, since the 90s. So we have so many. And sometimes our multi-rotor system or their fixed wing. And also we have this combination of fixed wing and rotary wing with this double uh, um, <clears throat> system in which there are also possibilities to tilt the rotors and fly like a fixed wing after vertical takeoff and landing. So vertical takeoff and landing and um, fly efficiently as a fixed wing are the significant characteristic. Here you can see one of the aerial manipulators. So let's go. Then now we have the transition. Everybody is looking to the uh, among uh, traffic management related with you transportation, human air mobility, urban air mobility. So that means passenger transportation, essentially. And there are many companies who are really approaching this company and we are working with these companies, including the Chinese He Hang and the Volocopter. There are even some certifications and there are already some operations by these companies in, in China. But also uh, we have some in, in Europe. Volocopter is a company in which one of our PhD was uh, working. So that means that uh, this is already working in in different countries. Um, I think that in 
this decade, we will have this in operation in almost all the countries. Okay, now um, the challenges here. Concerning the, the, the red ones are the ones that are more related with the talk in autonomy and the safety, collection, detection, and avoidance, what to do in case of failure. This is also relevant. And also the integration in the space, again, taking into account the position and uh, all the trajectories of all the others, including manned and unmanned aircrafts. So I like bio-inspired approach. I like birds. So you can see here uh, how I introduced the challenges in autonomy to work like a bird. So in this corridor, fly like this bird, this eagle, and being able to map, to know the position, to pr project trajectories, to plan reactivity, to have reactivities, and then to control the motion. This is critical. To save energy is very critical here. So here, look, so there is a prey, and then there is immediately change to trajectory for intersecting the prey. So everything real time, very fast, we will be able to do that. So we would like to do that, but obviously we are still not able to do this kind of things. They have essentially uh, cameras, but here we use, because they are more reliable today, multi-rotor system with uh, lidars. So we are able to perform simultaneous localization and mapping. So we are able without uh, GNS uh, without the GPS or any kind of uh, global positioning system, we are go we are able to entry in uh, these environments to map the environment and to compute the position in this environment, and then you can see the differences in green versus red between the simultaneous the localization and the localization accurate obtained by a uh, Leica the station very accurate positioning system. However, um, usually you do not have, and you have to rely on this uh, um, laser, LIDAR uh, mapping. So here is the same, but in that case it's in the project, is in aerial core, you will see later more. But essentially we have here also the vegetation and we want to have compute the position uh, of the line and also in the map and also to measure the distance between the vegetation and the line because it's critical. Here we can have about five, six centimeters. In other industrial application, we got even one centimeter or two centimeters. But here in, in these uh, distances in the open field is about one, uh, is about five centimeter accuracy. And then uh, in this industrial environment, we are able uh, fully autonomous to uh, navigate in, this is for the water, sewer, and this is an uh, inspection of a tank. And then we have uh, to navigate without a pilot, without a positioning system, because the pilot, uh, because the communication in many cases cannot access to this environment, cannot see, and then this is fully autonomous. We get this all this information because uh, uh, we know the position and then we are able to inspect from these images the state of the tank, of the sewer, for example, here. Um, okay, autonomy. We can navigate fully autonomous, but also landing. Landing, um, it is needed in very constrained surface. So this is a joint work with DLR. So my student was uh, the thesis at the University of Seville last year, but this was performed at DLR. So fixed wing uh, landing on a car so the GN uh, positioning system was by satellite, by later was by means of this marker. And then we are able to compute very accurate the position and then finally to land. This is relevant because in many of these aircraft, uh, the weight of the uh, landing gear is very relevant with the total weight. So they are looking to apply this commercially even in solar planes in which this is even more relevant or even in commercial bigger planes just uh, coordinating the motion of the platform and the aircraft. Another idea that I would like to show is how to combine computer vision with, uh, I mean, it is almost impossible to have fully uh, autonomy in terms of computer, only computer vision. So what we try to combine is to adapt also the, the system to deal with these inaccuracies mechanically. And this is by using material science in which we can deform these uh, grasping techniques in such a way that even if we are not perfect 
with the computer vision system, we are able to, this is the segmentation, I will give some, some details now, but, but we are able even to deal with these inaccuracies because, because we are able essentially to um, the final uh, landing to adapt to these uh, small uh, inaccuracies to, to have these challenging uh, conditions. So you can see a little bit more here, the gripping force and how to adapt. Otherwise, I think that it is almost impossible. Consider that we also have wind conditions and so on. So here you can see with more detail how to, to adapt, to finally uh, land on the vertical of this, uh, of this uh, pipe. There is nothing very special with the computer vision. So we see an end. And we also have a segmentation. We use this software, which is well known, uh, but we need to be very fast. We have the real sense as a sensor um, to compute also the distances. So we have the segmentation, but also we need the distance. And then we have the segmentation of the cylinder. Um, it is not uh, very complex, but it's efficient. And we can perform this uh, in real time. Okay, now the idea. If we are able to land on platform um, in very constrained surface, why not to use the recharging the battery? So we want to fly long distances and because the limitations of the multi-rotor system only tens of minutes, then we are able to put some um, recharging station and fully autonomous fly, identify where this fly and then recharge the batteries on that continuous with others, so we can even collaborate with several platforms to maintain persistency in the application in such a way that some of them are recharging the batteries, others are flying and so on. So this is an interesting problem. And um, well, okay, from the point of view of the multi UAV system, I think this is possibly we have uh, a lot of work in this uh, field. So I think that we have been working since it 90, uh, 2002. I would say here there is the detection with some uh, sensor flying and then the confirmation of alarm is a probabilistic technique uh, with the cooperative perception in which we also have another third. So we try to um, decrease the uncertainty, position, detect, and finally uh, monitor the fire. And here you can also see another project in which we combine the information from the sensors on ground on the on the in that case was the five brigades, the persons, and then we localize with several of them, we uh, the compute the position and then we activate this. So this is a demonstration of the positioning accuracy and also we are able to, to, to extinguish the fire. So you can also see here, several of them flying at the same time in this very constrained environment. And we are able to, and this is important for integration in urban traffic management, we are able to, to deal with several of them flying at the same time and avoiding obstacles. So this is also very relevant. And below you can see also the multi-drone project uh, led by Professor Peters in which the problem was shooting with <coughs> following the, the the general plan of the director and try to generate the plans for the different UAVs and then co to coordinate the motion. So uh, our activity here is with the decentralized algorithms, robustness uh, because the loss of drones, communication constraints. We studied all these problems and this generate a lot of publication. In fact, there we have five publications between the 15 most cited publications in multi UAV system. So it's a strong presence here. Okay, but now we also transfer these technologies to Boeing Research and Technology Europe, Navantia, which is the biggest company in Spain for um, marines, and um, one of the biggest in Europe. So that means that uh, this has been transferred to, to these companies, big companies. And now we are working in the inspection of electrical line, combining um, multi-rotor conventional system with the hybrid, uh, uh, VTOL and also uh, fixed wing fly. And then we are performing today, this week, we are performing today this experiment. This was preliminary experiment in December, last December, but now we are performing with Endesa the very first uh, inspection experiments in, in Atlas. And then I hope that we will get a lot of data 
to refine the, the aerial core system in the in the next. So, but but now I think that this is a more refined experiment than this one. Okay, now you will find also a lot of problems dealing with amount traffic management, as I mentioned. So there is another area in which we are working with some projects. And then um, the key problem is to coordinate the trajectories between man and a man aircraft. So we have to deal with 4D because we consider the time. Um, and also we have to provide services and how the conflict. So there is almost always conflict. How the conflict? How can artificial intelligence apply to recommend how to deconflict. Sometimes not uh, fully autonomous, but just to recommend how to deconflict. So there is a threat management because there is always conflict, loss of separation, jamming, all this should be um, refined to implement this system in, in practice in the cities, in urban, real environments. So, but also for the student, it's good to know that uh, this is also good for the competition. So this is the Khalifa University uh, aerial robotic competition and we won. We won the challenge three with a team of aerial robots flying at the same time, extinguishing the fires here with a blanket and here with water. You can see here, it's a team of uh, aerial and ground robot. People was very happy. Um, okay, the students, you can see the big team and we won. So we won the 250 50 euros that we distribute between all the students. I think that they are more happy after after that. So, um, and then uh, I went to the to to the challenges, that's pending challenges. I think that collision detection and avoidance is always open in the sense that reliability is a key issue. So we cannot rely in some sensors. We have to to be uh, more safe in terms of uh, the not only the detection but the avoidance, we have to integrate in radio, we have to integrate vision, we have to integrate other sensors. So I put this because it's relevant for this talk. And also uh, for the point of view, almost nobody in aerial robotics, uh, obviously in, in traffic, uh, aerial traffic, they consider the wind and the weather condition and so on. But very few people consider the wind planning for our drones. You will see later how we are starting to consider the wind because it's very relevant to plan trajectories in with our small UAVs. You will see later. So protect is not enough. We want to have something more because this is not efficient. We can protect, but this is not efficient enough. We can fly finally 10 minutes, 15 minutes maximum. So the next problem is how to, to, to use the wind, how to do like this, why we need to flap always. No, the key point is combining between flapping and gliding. How is the intelligence to flap between flapping and guidance? How we can learn from the birds? This is a not trivial problem, it's a difficult problem, but we are working on this. I think that this is a key aspect here. So I, I proposed my advanced grant, <coughs> not only dealing with uh, flying, but also with manipulation. The obvious concept is griefing, you know, the griefing which is mythological between, between uh, eagles and lions. And I got the project, so I, the advanced grant. And here manipulation means like the birds, they are able to nest, for example, but also to capture prey while flying and so on. So this is what we are starting to, we are working in this uh, advanced grant. Of course, we need the models. We need aeronautic people to model the system with gliding, with flapping and with tail. And we have all this interaction between flapping and tail because when you flap, you modify the behavior, aerodynamic behavior of the tail. And this is a very complex problem, but I think that it is feasible. So finally, in the last year, we have designed this one. We have designed three or four prototypes. This is the last one. And what is relevant is that we have about half a kilogram in the structure and we can have about the same payload. So we are able to put all the computers, all the cameras and also some additional payload. And this is very, very relevant to fly. So you can see here, we put the electronics all the electronics in the body, including this, um, including this navigation system, the computer, 
um, microcontroller for the low level um, and also microcomputer for, for uh, processing the images, everything on board. Um, one key element is the event camera. So because these, these cameras, the, com the conventional cameras with the, the flapping of the wing are very much affected. Here we have the event camera, the, the, the effect of the flapping decrease significantly. So is the, the lighting uh, transition between a certain level in each pixel, what is relevant. And this is not so uh, affected by the flapping. Also, it is well known that this is not affected by the change of the illumination because the dynamic range. So this is uh, very relevant for us. And because that we are able to, to fly, you can see um, these flights first, uh, this camera have the event camera in the nose. So you can see how we are able to fly with flight speed between two and six meters per second. Um, it is very difficult to, to perch, but we can have flights in even vertical, as you can see, but perching with this kind of birds is quite difficult. Static hovering, it is, uh, perching is difficult, we can do, but hovering is almost impossible. So you have to flap, uh, it's very uh, high. You can see here, there is a maneuverability is very high, but uh, it is almost impossible to, with this configuration to, to, to do the, <clears throat> the um, hovering. Hovering is very, very difficult. You need a smaller one, a lot of energy and so. So, um, but still we can perch fully autonomously and we can do now. We can almost indoor and outdoor because we have a big test bed with 20 meters, which is very good with millimeter accuracy. And this is very relevant, but let, obviously we also let, we go out, outdoor for, for this flight. And you can see here the event camera. So um, how is the transition of the events um, for activation and deactivation of every uh, of the of the pixels of the camera, and how to to use? We can use this for the. You can see this even in big changes of lighting conditions, and with flapping. So we can perform in these transitions very well. Okay, let's go continue with Pershing. Pershing for us is very important because it is almost impossible to maintain manipulation while, uh, while um, hovering, as I mentioned, but Pershing is possible. So we want to have this kind of things. We want to fly, we want to identify, recognize land automatically. This is a nice, uh, if you like eagles, this is a nice film. This person is uh, French, Spanish name, but it's a very nice, it's not a documentary, it's just a, it's a, it's a film. Okay, so we started to do that with our models, we compute where to land, so we know the models, and then um, by using closing the loop, we are able to guide toward this, uh, toward this point. Okay, in parallel, we are developing also the grasping mechanism and so on. So we would like to have this. very, very difficult. Because this weight, this weight is very relevant with respect to the total weight of the eagle, but we want to have this change and to control this transition in real time, which is obviously very, very difficult. We would like to do this kind of things. Some people do with multi-rotor system, but doing with a uh, with, uh, flapping wing is quite, quite difficult. You can see here, so there is hovering here with uh, Hummingbird. You can do this kind of things, uh, but but this is almost impossible with the eagle-like or bird, bigger birds. So we want to maintain the contact as we did for the inspection, but it is almost impossible to do that without perching. So from the, let's say from the, 10 years ago, we started to work in, in aerial manipulation. So we knew some people working on particular devices, particular devices to perform some inspection, for example, or cleaning, but we want to have a new field, which is the aerial robotic manipulation, which is a evolution of the mobile robotic manipulation. We have a number of colleagues in robotics 
working in mobile robotics, but we want to have general manipulation capabilities with a science a point of view of control, perception, and planning capabilities. So we have to deal with the flexibility for multiple application, dexterity can sell perturbation because the criticism for many people was, okay, why you need so many degrees of freedom and so on? Because they are redundant. No, they are not redundant because we want to cancel the perturbations and we want to have this redundancy to, to perform better in a number of applications. Maybe we want to have dexterity. So we started this project uh, taking into account all this. So these are the generation of autonomous. Uh, uh, today I have been, I have been communicated that uh, our uh, review of uh, aerial robotic manipulation has been accepted to the transition on robotics and automation. So you will have the papers with the generation of aerial robotic manipulation and so on. So it has been accepted and will be published pretty soon. I think that there is an increasing intelligence here. So we started with this uh, mechanism. Then we put some navigation with the satellite with onboard perception, very only with markers, but then we have a uh, general perception. Um, we have uh, right now dealing with learning and other approaches. Let's go a little bit into the details. So the first project was ARCAS that I led, and this is some kind of summary. So first uh, suspended, cancellate the motion. So being able to cancel this uh, <clears throat> with perturbation, how to plan how to plan taking into account the motion the, the, and the idea was the structure, to be done structure, but you need a lot of accuracy to do that. So um, also to deploy a ground robot, and then you also need a lot of accuracy to do that. But we put, you can see here the markers. At that time, it was almost impossible. And we also have the help of uh, radio beacons to localize the parts. But we also wanted, we, we wanted always to have multiple of them and to transport um, jointly loads and so on. And we have an integrated experiment to have uh, helped by the radio. And then with vision and radio, being able to build this structure. And we did. So essentially with a team of mobile robots, we were able by using computer vision to uh, have the accuracy that we need to build this structure in real time, flying, all this flying, which was uh, difficult because we obviously have uh, perturbation even indoor, we have significant perturbation and so on. And then this was very difficult, how to transport this long bar, avoiding obstacle, detecting and avoiding obstacle in real time. So this was uh, really difficult to do, but we finally did, as you can see here. So additionally, this, this project, uh, we went outdoor. This is the Catec indoor test bed. This is in the technology center. But then we went to the university outdoor. At that time, we did not have the indoor test bed. So we were able to positioning and um, to, to have this um, grasping and so on. And this was in, in DLR, in the robotic aerospace center with a bigger arm and this Flettner helicopter um, again, with the same technology, with uh, closing the loop with visual servoing being able to manipulate, which is uh, something that we applied from that time. So the project was also applied to space because uh, we simulate with a bigger robots the motion of the satellites. And this is the docking from the Earth, knowing the motion of the satellites. And we did a DLR. Um, performing because obviously there is a reaction of the motion of the arm into the satellite. Okay, so we managed to convince to the to the commission that uh, we need to improve the technology with new aerial robots, a new aerial robot manipulator, but the commission wanted to apply. So we started to apply the system and the application was industrial uh, inspection and maintenance. So we need to to work in such a way that we can eliminate this dangerous work with the ultrasonic testing of this in order to evaluate the wall thickness because this is related with the corrosion and finally with the possibility to have a, the possibility to have a explosion as you can see here. So, but at the same time we develop new system, for example, with dual arm. So we were able to develop a Seville new system with dual arm and we eliminate the markers 
So we are able to detect in real time while flying and use closing the loop for visual survey. So this is some kind of um, dual arm um, close to anthropomorphic and compliant. So we need to control and you can see the, the accuracy here. So, um, and this is interesting also for artificial intelligence, how to plan, how to plan taking into account not only the motion of the multirotor, which is well known, but the motion of the multirotor and the motion of the arm. And because they, there is an interaction, when you move the arms, there is also an effect on the motion of the platform. So there is a complex problem. And you can see, for example, here that uh, in order to pass by this uh, structure, you will need to control the multi-rotor, but also to move the arm uh, in such a way that we do not collide. So we did, even we did with significant wind. So we were able to manage all this and to perform this uh, planning and control operation. And then we closed the loop and we also put the computer vision to have everything uh, in real time. So that means that uh, this was the Iron project. I can provide some more details. Finalized it in 2019, one half year ago. No, I think that uh, you can see here uh, again the, the grasping while flying. And then we have also the, the possibility to, to maintain the, this contact to measure, which is more critical from the point of view of the reactions because the separation between the contact and the rotors. At the same time, planning um, and perception, uh, everything uh, on board, everything on board. And then we put uh, all this motion in the system, planning the system with everything included perception, planning, and control. So this was the very first aerial manipulation with able to map, to plan the motion and to execute this motion, moving the multi-rotor of the arm, everything in real time. So you can see the motion here. And then we moved to the industry. We were able to go to the industry and to attach here, and then to uh, move this for inspection, for, and then to put this sensor here. This was first to a cement kiln, and later we went to a refinery in Germany. Everything together, the perception. Um, so we have here the simultaneous localization and mapping in this complex, very complex environment. Then we have the planning for this environment. And then we have, as you will see, the real inspection. So the ultrasonic inspection moving this N effector in such a way that you maintain the contact. So this is ultrasonic and this detect the, the wall thickness, which is what we wanted to have in, in different points. So we validate this. And this was uh, very good in terms of industrial impact. So this was uh, in some way acknowledged by the media in all Europe. So um, this also the commission that was very, very interested in this application we have Aero news here in Seville a couple of times. They 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 have been uh, they have from Seville in a couple of different programs, and then we presented the system for the Innovation Radar Award of the Commission, the European Commission, and we got we got the award, which is the fir very first time that one robotic project got the you know, um, the award, the Trans Technology Transfer Award from the full area in ICT. So this was uh, very good. We also produced a book with all the, the results. Um, so I think that was uh, technology achievement, but also publication and so on. So we apply also the system for the inspection of uh, bridges, which also significant because uh, we, we are able to detect cracks, for example, um, with the same system and also to attach by using aerodynamic effect. And then if you move uh, the system along all this bridge in different points, you are able to compute the deflection uh, in the bridge. So there are different possibilities of this uh, system. Um, this is also already implemented for bridge inspection. Now we have another project for tunnel inspection. Okay, next point. How Okay, finally, again, this is 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Why we need always to fly? 
land, as you have seen, and then move is another strategy. So the idea is land in difficult sites, you have seen that we are able, and then move. And then you can spend a lot of time for the inspection, saving energy. And this was uh, interesting because we have also the accuracy that we need because this with this arm to measure um, the same contact, the contact inspection below the pipe, which are when, that, when there are liquids, this is the relevant area to, to inspect. Okay, problems. What kind of problem can we solve with our perception is obvious, but how to plan for this hybrid system? So this is the first time that we have been working with hybrid system, how to plan. So we have to plan in the hybrid space because we want to plan combining, flying and rolling. And this was pretty new for these hybrid robots. So that's depend of the, uh, the, the space that we want to explore and also for the optimization capability because there is a optim operation time you need to have urine inspection, but also you have routine inspection in which very important to the energy that you are, uh, the consumption of the energy. So when you need to fly more when it's urgent, otherwise it is better to have combination of fly and rolling because the energy. And then you can see here that you fly until we uh, land here and then you roll. Of course, uh, that is not always possible to land. It's not always possible to land. You have to, to have transition in some particular cones like this. So we have very new, fresh problems to solve in planning and we have been working. So you can see here the two strategies with the minimum operation time and the minimum energy consumption here, depending on the particular application. So this is new. And we are working with these topics uh, right now. A couple of theses working with that. Now let's go to Aerial Core, which is the project in which uh, Professor we are collaborating with Professor Peters. And uh, here, Aerial uh, Artificial Intelligence is in the core. So the cognition is for morphing, for manipulation, and a new application, which is the co-working. So that means to work with a human worker. So we want here to have all this because cognition here. Now, I will try first to put the, the video that Professor uh, Peters know because we presented uh, one and a half or a couple of months ago in the review of uh, this project, Aerial Core. This is the system designed by Catec to land on the cables and then to move in the cable. We want to plan to install this, which are bird diverters different kind of bird diverters in such a way that the bird can see and avoid the collision with the, with the line, with the cables. So we are designing all these manipulation activities before putting on board. Also, we are constructing this hand because we want to grasp with one hand and to manipulate with the other. We are starting to do that with one hand and manipulating with the other. Um, installing different kind of uh, device. This is everything automatic. And we want to push here to install, to install these uh, bird diverters first uh, indoor. And we started to touch the line. And obviously this is a hot line with tension. And obviously, even if we thought that we have the proper isolation was not the case, but our pilot was uh, in that case, safety pilot was very efficient. However, later we have been back and now we are able to have in contact. And another possibility is to have the, to use the line for recharging the batteries. This is ongoing work. This is not uh, working now, still ongoing work. This is another work of the University of Zurich here with the visual navigation. And we are working together with uh, Professor Peter and other researchers for detection uh, of features in the line and in the environment, mapping, and then um, we will use the cognition for uh, cognitive mapping and being able to have semantic mapping and so on. This is also work of the University of Czech Technical University with a team of uh, UAVs. This is our work in the inspection of the rail lines. 
is similar to what we are doing today, all this week in Endesa Lines in, in, in Spain. This is some work of the uh, EPFL for morphine. And this is the, you have seen with the eagle, we want to grasp in real time with the multi-rotor system, but also with the fixed wing, as you can see here. So the absorption of the energy is very important. We have also this prototype, which is combined flapping with the fixed wing with a propeller, a small propeller, in such a way that we can fly forward. And then the problem is that to recognize, this is also the work of uh, Professor Pita, to recognize the gestures of the workers, to help them, and then to provide, for example, tools to work in the lines. So this is the University of Twente, but we are also working in Seville in this uh, topic. So this is aerial core. Now again, planning problems for aerial core. This is a cognitive teaming. So uh, we want to install no one or two bird diverters. We want to install many bird diverters and there is different possibilities again. We can fly, but we, we want also to take into account in this open field, the wind. And also we can take into account the different height between the different towers. So it may be possible that in some cases you are able to plan taking into account models of the energy of flying and models of the energy of rolling, taking into account the different height here. So obviously we have to adapt the planning problem to different uh, environments. And we want to consider all this in the, in the planning. So um, and then in the classical planning, the edges are asymmetric and we have to learn taking into account the wind and the energy consumption. These are key aspects in our research. So we are considered some solvers, the mixed integer linear programming solver formulations. And then we are considering some meta heuristic algorithms to formulate the problem, taking into account the inspection time, but also very important, the, the battery, the battery drop, which is always relevant in drones. Wind, battery are critical, critical consideration. So here um, we want to have models of energy consumption. So we are going to consider the, the battery in real time, the aerodynamic power, and we also, have here, you have all this depending of the weight. So different curves are for different weights. And this is uh, needed because uh, we are at the beginning, different way that at the end, because we have a lot of bird diverters that we want to install. And then we have to switch and then we can compute the optimal uh, because there is a, you know, that the ground speed is the speed with respect to the, so that if you divide the time, the, the, the total, uh, uh, by the total time and the, the space between the total time, you compute the ground velocity, but also there is the velocity with respect to the surrounding air, but you have also to consider the wing effect. So we have the three. I see this is the, 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 the variable that is critical here to compute the optimal airspeed, taking into account the, the velocity with respect to a ground and the wing effect. So we plan to to, to learn this model with the real-time wind measurements. So, um, so finally, we have also bio-inspiration for the manipulation. So we want to have capabilities um, of manipulation uh, like uh, the birds do. But of course, we need to be able to perch and then to maintain the equilibrium when, when manipulating, which is also very difficult. So we started to work this problem and then we plan to uh, solve these control problems. Sorry. We, we wanted to solve these control problems um, in such a way that we can control the motion. This is non actuated. In such a way that we can do things like this. So the problem here is to have also the grasping capability, combine this with the friction. This friction is given by the, the grasp. And this is again, material science to have deformation and um, exert different forces. And also we want to be able to manipulate combining uh, 
for example, to maintain the equilibrium, the motion of the arms with the motion of the tail. So we plan to have all this to maintain the equilibrium while, while perching. So we are trying to do this. And here without control, uh, with control, we want to add friction with the grasping and so on. So this is ongoing work and we plan to implement this in our birds. So the challenges, again, the challenges because we want to be, I want to be on time today. So the cognitive navigation. So we need to be very fast, close in the loop with vision. I would say, I would like to close the loop with um, milliseconds. We need safe aerial coworkers. So we need to be able to fly very uh, close to people and being able to monitor the safety of these people. And even more difficult, we want to morph, to change or to change the locomotion modes, taking into account the state of the robots and the environment. So how to morph, taking into account the wind, for example, very critical. And we also want to apply new concepts to multimodal locomotion, including not only air, but ground and, and water. So let me look to the future and what we would like to have. Okay, forget a little bit about the new aerial robots. We are working on this, of course, new generation of safe drone by Inspired Urban Air Mobility. But we want to have application of learning techniques to both navigation and manipulation. This is one of our key problems. Second is the cognition and teaming. We, we want to continue with our activity in multiple UAVs, multiple aerial robots, but also as I introduced it before, we wanted to have hybrid locomotion. And we also want to move to hybrid teams. So that means aerial, ground, and aquatic. And the industry is very interested in these topics. Of course, if we solve of this, we have many possible applications, including not only inspection and maintenance, as you have seen, but also logistic, assembly, search and rescue, even long in a little bit longer time by the end of the, this decade, I would say, passenger transportation. And this is my, my vision of the future. Thank you very much for your attention. I tried to put too many things instead of going details in some few of them, but this is what I did.